Peace, everybody. Welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to break down the big fight going down in Japan for two of the 122 Super Bantamweight titles between Steven Coolboy Steph Fulton and Nayoa the Monster in OUA. I hope I said that right. I think I did. Either way. It's going to be a good fight, and we are excited to break this down for you and talk about what we think we will see this Tuesday in the ring. Take it away, Rob. All right, so this is going to be a big fight for both of the guys. This They will be each other's best opponent up to date and should start a really good second half of the year of good boxing with big names that will be taking place. Um, we've had a good first half. Some were very lackluster. Um, some were, there were some expectations that they would be good and they simply weren't, but this one should be a great fight. We have a uh, monster anyway out of Japan, 24 no 21 knockouts his power has carried from 108 pounds to up to 118 pounds but he's moving up another weight class to 122 to take on Stephen Fulton um Fulton currently has the WBC belt right now if I'm and not the mistaken. WBO I believe I think those are oh. the two belts he has okay so he has he has a couple of belts in that division. His last couple of fights and opponents have been really good at Brandon Figueroa and D Daniel Roman, but they aren't quite, if at all, on the level of Inouye, who has taken on almost a who's who of 108 to 118 pounds, capping it off with two huge wins versus Nonito Donaire, a future boxing Hall of Famer, and a staple of the lower weight divisions. Um, he eked out a close, I think he still got the unanimous decision, but it was still close. It might have been majority decision. And then he got an early round knockout against Donaire, which is second round. Always, second round. Yeah, he, he, he learned from the first fight where he got taken into deep water. He was shown some things by the former champion, or the at the time he was the current champion, and uh, and veteran. So now he's taking on someone that is firmly in their prime, undefeated in a higher weight class. And he's actually big for the weight class with Fulton. He actually made the comment that um, for the Figueroa fight, he felt drained for that division and being about two inches taller um about a four inch reach advantage on it in a way. And I would hazard to guess that he's probably going to come in this fight with a 10 pound weight advantage. At um, least. At least. And that, that may not be saying a lot to some people, but when you have such a low weight and again, with in a way moving up or beginning at one Oh eight, that is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, we haven't seen that kind of um, the power carry, and the growth since Pacquiao, and I don't think it's ever been done again. Donaire tried it. There was a, a cap on his power moving up to, I think he moved as far up as 126. Yes, and he was promptly sent back down by Nicholas Walters. So we don't know if we're getting that out of out of in a way, especially with a guy who's big for that division but it's interesting to see wh whether his power will carry his skills will carry um you don't lose skills from a higher division i mean from a lower division you your power is one of those things that you may lose as you hop divisions and then you're going to a division against a guy who is extremely fast so a bigger faster i'm going to say more athletic guy maybe not skill wise but a more athletic guy from a boxing crazy city like philadelphia oh he's up for it and even though fulton does not have that sexy knockout record he only has eight knockouts in 21 fights it's still a major thing to move that far up so yeah. um yeah it's it's going to be an interesting challenge i still mentally don't have a confident 
pick for these guys because they need to do I. They both bring something different and they haven't they literally haven't faced someone of their caliber or even style. Um, right. I don't know if anyone has paid attention to this fact, and I mentioned it to Hakeem in the text message, but this will be the only non Puerto Rican American fighter because regardless of what people think, Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Just <laughs> throw that throw that little history question history fact out there. Trivia. Um the trivia fact for mm-hmm. those who don't know, they're still Americans. But the only American non-Puerto Rican fighter that in a way has fought was Donaire. And Donaire being very skilled, very powerful, not quite in his prime, um deceptively athletic is not quite a guy from Philly who learns that slick and I and I cringe to say this that slick urban style that in a way has not seen at all in any of the lower divisions yeah, that's I mean that's it's it's a fact he has not fought a single fighter that um, employs that style and but he has a lot of tools that can help him against that style, which is excellent timing. And we saw that versus Donea, especially in the rematch, when he was able to counter him every time, like every time he dropped him, it was a counter shot where he baited him in and was able to punch with Donea. If he can do that with Fulton and that power carries, he can have a lot of success here. And really, I think that's the number one X factor is if the power carries. Um, it probably will, honestly, but he hasn't had to hit somebody as big as Fulton either. So where while he may still have, you know, maybe a pop that maybe somebody who is more stationary, who is a you know, hasn't been in the type of fights that Fulton have, he may be able to knock somebody else out and he still may be able to knock Fulton out. But that that's the big X factor. Will he be able to do it? The weigh in picture, Fulton, even though they came in close to the same weight, Fulton looked bigger. He looked much bigger. He's going to be much bigger once they get in the ring. Will he be able to absorb that punishment and be able to still compete at his style that he does as those rounds carry on? One of the things um, that I did notice, like versus Figueroa and versus Roman, because Figueroa is a high volume puncher. Fulton was able to go to distance. You, you didn't really see a, a fade late on in the fight. He was able to close that fight strong. And it was a very close fight. I think he got that by a split decision, right? That was a split decision. Yes. Right. So he was able to close the show in a close fight. And then Roman, who never stopped coming, he was able to continue to outbox him, out uh, out wrestle him when he, you know, when they got in close. He was able to grab him, and he was able to dodge his punches for the majority of the fight. So he has a lot of intangibles that you know we need to see in there with someone with the technical skill and the timing and the power of uh, Inouye. And see if he can nullify that with his movement, with his jab, because he has a very educated jab. And will he be able to pretty much outpoint? You know, he, I, I would say that he puts punches together a little bit better than in OA, but there's a clear power difference that we've seen so far. Uh, Fulton has been at 122 his entire career. He's fought these bigger guys. He hasn't really stopped him. He's not fighting one of those guys. He's fighting a guy who's coming up and who has a start size difference than the guys that he's used to fighting. So that, to me, is the number one X factor of this fight because both guys are highly skilled and they both um, have tools that the other one hasn't seen like you said earlier in the video so and i see them both having success using those tools 
So the question is, you know, does the size help Fulton weather those hard punches from Inoue or can he wear him down with the counters, with the timing and get a stoppage at any point in this fight? And th- and I think the late rounds are going to be the X factor because will in a way bring constant pressure pushing Fulton back for the entirety of 12 rounds because he needs to be prepared to go all 12 rounds. Now, granted, he's going to want the knockout. He's going to push for the knockout, but is he going to chase knockout or is he going to let it come to him naturally throughout the fight? If he's going to press, is he going to push? that he's going to miss because the one thing about Fulton is he can counter punch. And when he does punch, he does not get caught. He sticks with that, that rule when putting your punches together, do not stay in the same place when you're finished, your punch output can in a way he catches guys him. coming in very well too. Yeah. And, 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 and in a way has great timing. So there are going to be times where he's going to time Fulton. Can he weather that power as they come in again con- constant consistent pressure from a guy like in a way with his ability to time and set up and always be in position to punch and land a great power shot can fulton take that again being the bigger man he's going to take it better than in a way's previous opponents but can he overall take it now for any way can will he find that timing Will he last within to that within that fight? Because not only is he moving up again four pounds, but can he carry himself into those deep rounds without a significant drop off in output? Because what I've also noticed, he again Fulton continued to fight in both of his toughest fight fights against Ramon and Figueroa, and against Ramon late in the, late in the fight. He was actually pressing forward. And the one thing about guys that I think that people don't realize, and it's very deceptive of guys who don't have a lot of knockouts, they're usually pretty physically strong and throw solid punches. They may not be knockout punches, but they're get your attention punches. They're make you think twice punches. They're stopping you your track punches. Look at guys, again, like, like Fulton, look at Tim Bradley, was never really a knockout artist. But when he hit you, it would slow guys down. And it never really slowed anyone down unless your name was Manny Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, and, and that's like greatness level special. Yeah, that, I mean, um, when, when you talk about him, that's like one of the best fighters in the history of the sport. So like, that's a outlier when we talking yeah. about just again, about everything do not underestimate guys who don't have a lot of knockouts because again they have enough power to get your attention constantly even a guy like sean porter who is not a knockout artist he still hits hard and because he's so physically strong he can take a lot of punishment even though he gets knocked down late late in fights he still can take and give a lot of punishment. And because Fulton is the bigger guy, he's going to be more physical with in a way. So um, that, that, that is a good question. Like, will he? Cause like, usually he likes to move. He likes to set traps. He likes to set angles, but him being bigger and longer, eventually, like as the fight goes on, maybe he does begin to use his weight or maybe, you know, anyway, tries to uh, rush and crowd his space and Fulton is able to tie him up and he get he tires him out trying to break the hole. I mean, you know, those things. And then all of a sudden you got this bigger guy who may not, have, like you said, doesn't have a sexy knockout uh, record, but you got this bigger guy hitting on you. Now it's starting to seem like, you know, he is hitting you with some bricks. Right. Or they just and, feel like bricks late in the fight. <laughs> right. And and so really, um, you know, going into a a pick up until probably this morning, I was 
hardcore uh, Nia in a way, like all the way. I was like, he's going to catch Fulton eventually and, and stop him in a fight that he's probably either very competitive in or losing. And now as we sit here and talk about it, and as I watch those other fights, now I'm not so sure. Like, I I was pretty sure all the way up until, like, I, I started, like, really looking at the, the disparity in their size. And there's only a few fighters that have ever done the things that, like, we've seen Manny Pacquiao do. We've seen Floyd Mayweather do. We've seen Oscar De La Hoya um james tony and roy jones two guys who i mean though once again th those two are definitely like the most extreme outliers because they went up like 40 something pounds and, and they were like the last two guys in like a hundred years to be able to go from 160 to 200 plus and and win titles uh manny went from 105 to 154 and that is he's the only man to ever do that uh, I think De La Hoya did six. Mm -hmm. De La Hoya went from 130 to 160. Mm -hmm. And Mayweather went from 130 to 154. Uh, but, I think uh, Ray Leonard went from 47 to 75. Where did uh, where did Tommy Hearns go from? Because I know he went pretty Hearns high. Hearns also well. went from uh, Hearns ended up at Cruiserweight. I don't know if he won a title there, though. Right. But he did compete at 175. He he competed he started at 147 and, and, and went up. And those are huge gaps in weight. So if the monster pulls this out, he you know, this will probably be the equivalent of somebody going from lightweight to welterweight. And even then you don't see too many people able to do that successfully. And, so, and you got some talented guys right now trying to do the same. Even looking at Lomachenko, who started at 122. 118, I think. 120? He started at 118. And he, it seems like his cap has been 135. So, yeah. So, and, and he's one of the better talents that we've seen in the last 10, 15 years. So, Monster has a chance to, uh, Add his name to a very elite list here. And I'm excited to see if he can pull it off. I'm also to see, excited to see if Fulton can stop the hype train and get a little bit of hype himself. So Pretty much um, because not a whole lot of people were talking about him Um as much and i was watching the guy i was like but you kind of you when you see guys you kind of wish I'm like man i wish he just had just slightly better competition or just slightly more competition coming up uh coming moving up in weight class and he 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 got the creme de, de la creme right now just yeah, coming and, up from a lower weight class I, i'll tell you another thing i can almost guarantee that he will see more respect from the fans there in japan than he Gets here in the states. I believe it. <laughs> I definitely believe it. Um, I'm I'm just gonna leave it at that. Who 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 do you have winning? Uh, I'm going back and forth because, in a way, it's such a supreme talent. He's so powerful, but it's it's uh his ability to set up. Even on my TV now, I I have the replay of the fight between him and Donaire. Uh, Which one? The first, the first one. The first one. And, okay. Yeah, and he's his timing is just is just amazing. Even when he he <laughs> for those that like basketball, just a small hezzy throwing that powerful jab, waiting half a second, and letting the two go right behind it is just that kind of timing to freeze his opponent in place. But then you have a guy like Fulton, who again. Very slick boxer, very urban style, very athletic, uses the entire ring and never in the same place for too long um, will make it really difficult. I'm hoping for a good fight. I think it's going to go the distance. I think we. I'm not going to say it's going to be controversial. 
but I can see this ending and uh, warranting a rematch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, you bring up that first Donaire fight. Like, Donaire does a lot of things that people will consider urban. And he was doing it at, what, he was like 38 at that exactly. time? Mm -hmm. And he was able to, like, really give an OUA fits at times. At times. So, can Fulton capitalize off of that? And and make those fits more often and um, farther in between the adjustments that were made, so he would still win that fight. That I mean, like I said, I I think I want to go with an OUA too. Um, I, I I think he'll either like I think he may affect Fulton like once or twice and that'd be enough to like carry the fight yeah i think so too um the old men in vegas have um have fulton plus 200 so if you want to take a chance to make some money you probably want to go with fulton but so so he's the underdog right that means he's the underdog he's the underdog gotcha okay yeah so um that that's a that's a live dog right there. Yeah. Very live. So, you know, there you have it, guys. What do you think? I know um by the time this goes live, we won't have a lot of time for comments and discussion, but um we're gonna try to get a recap out. I don't think it'll be both of us on the recap, but we'll 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 have a recap out. And then at the end of this week, we'll have a preview for Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, the biggest fight in the welterweight division since Floyd Manny. So definitely that is 100% must see TV. And that same night you got, uh, Jan Blahovich and, um, Alex Perea for, uh, in, in the lightweight division. And then, um, not lightweight, light heavyweight, but in the lightweight division, um, talking about MMA, UFC, you got Dustin Poirier and Justin Gagey, and those guys are 100% action. So that's must see TV too. Uh, oh, that's yeah. just not as not as big a stakes as Crawford and and Spence, but those are good fights too. And I, I think I'm gonna hit you guys with a video at the end of the week for those too. So if you have if you made it this far. I'm pretty sure you liked what you heard. You heard some objective, informative uh, boxing info. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon so you can get those um, updates when we upload those uh, videos. And if you have time or even afterwards, you know, drop a comment. You know, we're going to find out how close we were to being right. We don't really care about being right, and we're not going to pom-pom for any fighter regardless of who they are. We just want to see good technical boxing, showcases of skill, and entertainment in that aspect. So if that's you, you in the right place, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, fight on. And you've already lost They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone My fists are on fire I perform till I perspire My demons are in a rage Keep thinking that it's the game I kick rhyme, hurricane I told them I don't play I'm liquid the Black Street Fighter Street Fighter Street Fighter